Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Research Manager, Global Cloud Computing, 451 Research, Agatha Poon. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for joining this session. Uh, I figure before I start, I just want to give you a little background information about myself and my company. So I have been in this uh, research industry for about 15 years now, cover multiple topics from the legacy voice, data, managed services, IT outsourcing, to now cloud computing. So as the industry evolves, so does my research focus. And I think it's actually quite interesting because I enjoy being an analyst. Um, that's the flexibility and, and being able to learn new things all the time. Um, about my company, so 451 Research, 451 Group is the, you know, the, um, the group company, and then underneath we have 451 Research. It's a technology uh, research firm. And we are 14 years old now. Um, our headquarters is in New York, and we have multiple offices in the States, myself based in Boston, and we have other analysts in San Francisco, Washington, D.C., and uh, we also have analysts in London, and with Uptime Institute, which is our sister company, we also have offices in Singapore and Taiwan. So um, for Firm Research, um, we are sort of like a you know, mid-sized, small company. We have about 260 plus employees, uh, 1,400 plus uh, customers, ranging from enterprise users, service providers, vendors, and investment firm. And just like any company, uh, we grow organically and inorganically. So throughout the years, we made a number of acquisitions. And um, last year, actually late last year, we, made, uh, we acquired Yankee Group, which is my previous company. And then we also have two research firms, um, one called the InfoPro. They focus on focus group and really talk to the IT decision makers to understand their IT strategies, their budget plan, their technology choice, their roadmap. And I will share some of the data um, and information with you later on. And the other research firm we have is called ChangeWave. Uh, that one is more the you know, traditional online survey house. So we think that with that, uh, we have a pretty good pictures in terms of how we look at the market from you know, both the supply point of view as well as the enterprise or demand side of view. So um, that's how we actually um, generate our reports and as well as our um, uh, services. So today's topic is um, you know, OpenStack. You know, I'm sure that you heard a lot about OpenStat. A lot of the case study, bad practices, use cases. Um, before we actually get into some of the lessons learned from the early adopters, I think we really need to take a step back to really ask ourselves, you know, why should we care? Right? So um, that's really uh, uh, a very interesting, in the, uh, interesting uh, situation that the market dynamic is moving quickly. Uh, we have, you know, obviously a growing ecosystem, and we have enterprises. They're also very interested in getting into the cloud, so we will talk about that. And of course, the other topic is, you know, um, how big the cloud is, how big OpenStat could be, because now a lot of interest around OpenStat. But um, all, at the end of the day, all, I'm sure that you will be interested in knowing, you know, how big the size of the market could be. So we will kind of touch on that as well. And then we will get into some of the example um, from uh, service providers and vendors. And those are, I think the examples are very unique because those are the company that actually take OpenStack and productize uh, the service and deliver it to their customers. So it's a commercial production type um, application as, a, as opposed to um, you know, internal use. And then we will wrap this up with the key takeaways. So, OpenStat, um, in the state, we talk a lot about OpenStat, you know, every single day, you know, it's, it's really, really sexy term. People love to talk about that. In Asia, we also see a lot of different activity. But as we all know, Asia is a very diverse market. So I think it's very difficult to generalize the development, right? So we, what we try to do is to group this country with similar 
um, characteristic um, into one bucket, and then we try to you know, identify some of their you know, development. So if you look at the right-hand side, the blue box, we call this is kind of like the, the group of countries, they are well-developed countries, East Asia and Pacific countries, so it, which include um, South Korea, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. And this country, we see they have a um, very um, sort, of, sort of like similarity in terms of um, how the company, how, so, how enterprises and how service providers are moving. They are all in a transition mode. So they are in the transformation stage where they try to look for solutions and business models that can help them to streamline their um, operation. And obviously, consolidation is, is ongoing. So when, with the consolidation, they begin to identify new technologies, new business model. And in, in the context of OpenStack, and it's still in the early stage. I mean, we say it's still a very steep learning curve. Uh, but we do see a handful of commercial deployment driven by the local um, hosting, cloud, and um, managed service providers. Uh, in terms of the early adopters, we see uh, pretty much being used by academia. So they use OpenStack wisely for their research, for you know, uh, for for de de developing their projects. So in you know, pri in private, in public, and hybrid mode. So it's it's quite interesting. A lot of activities, you know, uh, basically in the education sector. As we move to the um, left-hand side, especially the, the orange box, orange, it looks like an orange and brown, you know, orange box, um, we identify two countries. Those are the two, the largest, you know, in Asia Pacific, China and India. And I think uh, if you join this morning session, you, you already you know, learn actually a lot going on in China in particular. I think uh, that has to do with the government support. I mean, the government really play a major role to drive a lot of new technologies, and which is their way to boost the economy. And uh, in China, I think there's really a lot of cloud computing project and initiative uh, spearhead by the government, by the, by the state government, by the local government. India, the same way, actually recently, I think the government made an announcement that they will have their government cloud, which is a big project because the way, um, this is the way that they realize the value of the, of the cloud and um, the goal is to have all the government agency to use uh, cloud computing as their IT um, infrastructure. Uh, for the providers, uh, Chinese providers are quite eager to productize you know, open step based uh, services. You know, early days we have seen uh, basically the app engine is based on open stack. And this morning we have a couple examples uh, from Baidu and uh, 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 Tiku 360. They also, you know, um, eager to uh, implement open stack. Now in India, it's slightly different. We actually I haven't seen any commercial deployment from service provider. I mean, if you if you heard any, let me know. But I haven't seen any commercial deployment yet. Most of the activity has been driven by global technology vendors like the IBM, HP, Microsoft, and of course, um, the reason for that is because they identify India as an emerging growth market, and they really want to uh, invest in it. And in terms of the early adopters, in, uh, in these two economies, uh, typically uh, the uh, academia and the, uh, the public sector. So the government also are the biggest user for cloud-based services. If you move down to the green box, which is emerging ASEAN and other South Asian economies, and uh, in particular, you know, Malaysia, Philippines, and Vietnam, they already been identified as the, you know, the outsourcing alternative if, you know, companies don't want to go to India or China. So that have a, you know, a major impact in terms of how the, the economy or how the country will develop because that will drive innovation, that will drive investment in infrastructures. Um, very often, we, when we look at some of the other South Asian countries, we typically think they are quite um, bad work or underdeveloped. Um, but here is just an example. Actually, Sri Lanka is leading the, you know, the South Asian countries in terms of the uh, human development uh, indicator. Like, this is an indicator is 
as a matrix being used by United Nations to measure the level of um, um, advancement of a country based on the knowledge of the, con you know, of the people, based on their living standard, based on their life expectancy. So I think, you know, it's always uh, uh, exciting to see, even though some country we consider as um, underdeveloped, but that could be, you know, one way to look at is that's also an uh, opportunity out there for service providers and even like, enterprises. Um, for the adoption, we obviously uh, tend to think OpenStat is more geared towards service providers. So it's the tools for service providers uh, uh, implement and deliver services. Uh, but we actually, we do see a lot of uh, interest from enterprises. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a um, survey house called the InfoPro, and they did uh, some focus group, uh, probably about 80 to 100 um, IT decision maker, and try to understand their appetite for OpenStack. So this one is just a general picture. So we look at the, um, you know, the, the, the survey participant and just kind of summarize their cloud journey when we ask all these enterprises, you know, uh, in terms of the IT infrastructure, um, how far they go. Well, typically we look at the, the different steps: is you standardize your environment, you consolidate, and you virtualize. And of course, the next step will be automation and orchestration. So um, over 60% of the enterprise right now actually already you know, gone through this virtualization stage. So the maturity, you can really see the maturity of the virtualization. And they are really get to the stage looking for a way to automate the process. As we all know, without automation, I mean, virtualization obviously doesn't really show much value. So um, now enterprise really at the, you know, sort of like at the stage to evaluate different tools and uh, management platform that can help them to bring their infrastructure to the next stage. On your right hand side, you see a number of the um, you know, vendor. Those are obviously the best of breed um, and the, the leading you know, technology vendor, which just to reflect that they have a very close relationship with enterprises. I mean, they usually treat them as partners. And so for them to um, support OpenStack will have a major impact on how enterprise see you know, different options, different technologies, choices. On your um, left hand side, you know, the, the upper part is kind of like the, the pinky box, which kind of show, you know, for enterprise, we ask, so what's, what are the major barriers for you to preventing you to move forward? And if you see all the reasons, actually it's not about technologies. It's really more about business-oriented reason or operation. So you have to deal with internal politics. You have to deal with you know, whether you have the budget to do that, whether you have the time, whether you have the, you know, the resources, human resources to do it. Um, so, but you know, obviously, technology is, is not a major concern for a lot of the enterprise at the moment. The next slide I want to show you, also very exciting, is when we ask enterprise, you know, just off the top of your head, to name you know, the most exciting vendors, technologies, and initiative. And you, as you can see here, OpenStack is you know, one of the top five. Now, it's a big deal, because even though the top, they're not the number one, but if you look at other vendors being selected, they are all you know, major, well-established vendors, and they already have very mature technologies. And as we all know, OpenStack is only three years old. So within, you know, in this three years, have to achieve that kind of awareness and acceptance among enterprise. And that's obviously is significant. And most of the enterprise said, uh, the reason why they like OpenStack is because of the, you know, just like, you know, just like you guys, you know, because of the community they really enjoy. The community allowed them to get a sense of uh, trust, to get a sense of visibility, security, and they also believe that will help reduce the fears, you know, about when the lock-in. The two verbatim that I think is interesting, I want to share with you. Um, when we ask, you know, enterprise, why do they like OpenStat? And, you know, one of the, you know, uh, participant, you know, answer is, of course, we are not identifying the name of the company, but it's from a large enterprises in the, you know, the business accounting engineering sector. 
And he said, OpenStack is very exciting. We continue to use VMware for traditional environment. Now, I think that is important because that show enterprise looking for OpenStack or you know, new, to new technology is not to replacing existing investment they have. Obviously, VMware is the existing investment they have. It's not re replacing. So OpenStack uh, is complement other technologies as opposed to as a replacement. And which also showed uh, the maturity of the enterprises because you need to really understand the feature set, the function, the value of each platform in order to be able to, you know, to put the right workload into the, into the right uh, platform. The other verbatim, I think, also um, interesting is, you know, one of the large enterprises in the finance sector said, we use Chef for the orchestration layer and a bunch of other stuff. And OpenStack is being examined to convert it to at some layers. So this also tells you that you know, actually enterprise are very familiar with open source type technology. So the comfort level is there. So with OpenStack, it's much easier for them to accept as opposed to other proprietary technologies. The next slide kind of shows you um, the roadmap of some of the enterprises. When we ask them, you know, moving forward, you know, where are you going to you know, put your money on uh, in terms of spending for your IT infrastructures? So we ask a lot of the enterprises because they are still pretty much in the on-premise private cloud environment. So we you know, look at, you know, so what's the next step for them uh, in addition to building a private cloud in, uh, within their own data center? And you can see here, automated server provisioning, almost 50% already you know, put money into. So the next step, as I highlight with this little box here, uh, for them to really look into invest is cloud platform and orchestration stack. That, you know, obviously is an open book. I mean, they can be cloud stack, they can be open stack, they can be, you know, evaluate some other proprietary platform. But, you know, that's the sort of like the, um, the, the stage of the enterprise as they move forward with their IT infrastructure plan. So when we talk about enterprise, you know, all this excitement, obviously you can imagine on the supply side, will be even more exciting. Uh, this is just kind of like a snapshot. Obviously, it's not an exhaustive list, and it's not all the logo there. And as we all know that the ecosystem continues to grow, and I think right now it's over 300 you know, companies already get into this ecosystem. And um, so we, we do believe that the ecosystem continues to grow with many different service providers you know, come into play. And you can see here, there's some provider that really take OpenStack as the architecture or API to deliver services to their customers. Some other providers, like vendors, they will take um, OpenStack and as a component and integrate it into their product and bring it to their customers. And then we also have another set of uh, service providers come in as a consultant or professional um, service providers that they provide services, managed services, around OpenStack. So it's really fascinating. You see the whole ecosystem is growing. And also, important to know is, even though we have so many different players here, they're not necessarily competing with each other, as we all know. I mean, they can work very nicely and seamlessly to deliver services to their customers. The next one I want to show you just the uh, market sizing. That's always an exciting one for especially service providers. You know how big the market could be because I make a lot of commitment there. I want to get the return on investment. So this is a forecast that we done uh, from our um, being done by our market monitor team. Um, it's a bottom-up model. So what that means is they talk to every players who are in this you know open stack. Um, services or, or strategies, and then understand you know, what's their strategies, their portfolio, their future plans, and based on that to come up with, uh, you know, obviously, our assumption methodologies and the forecasting model. And you can see here the size of the market is still small, less than 400 million in 2012, but we expect it will grow rapidly throughout the time, and by 2016, uh, it will exceed 1.6 billion. And by the way, this forecast doesn't include company take open stat and put it in the internal environment. So we don't count, you know, on-premise, you know, 
uh, open stack-based private cloud. Uh, in terms of the segment, uh, here we see the OpenStack service provider actually account the bulk of the revenue. So you can imagine Rackspace is going to be one of the you know, major leaders and major players in this segment. Uh, but we do believe um, it's going to be strong uptake in revenue, uh, especially from OpenStack distributors, you know, companies like Red Hat and uh, Canonical. So you can, you can see the revenue share we expect to grow the total revenue share, actually, we expect to grow from 3.5% in 2012 to 8.4% uh, from this uh, open set distributor segment. Uh, the, C, uh, the CAGR is very healthy growth, 43%, so um, that's obviously uh, a good news. This is just another way to look at the market sizing, and we just kind of like break it down into the different segments so you can see which server segment contribute you know, the, the revenue um, to make up the total market. And on your right-hand side, you see the different category. We have about seven different categories of the service uh, currently provided by um, service provider, by vendors. Um, in terms of the number of the vendors, in our forecast is uh, close to 60. And as I said earlier, we have 78% of the revenue share generated by OpenStack service providers, followed by OpenStack distributors, and obviously it's a, it's a second, really distant second, you know, for the OpenStack distributor, but um, that also shows you, you know, the mix of the market. I mean, we expect the share for the OpenStack service provider will continue to decline, and the share for other, you know, service segment will continue to grow. So, so far we talk about OpenStack is, um, it's a very exciting, um, you know, sort of like uh, conversation uh, among service providers and, and enterprises. And because of the openness and because of the community. And the beauty of the community is be able to share, be able to collaborate. So with that, actually I have to kudo to the company that I'm going to share with you because they are open to share their experience about, you know, how they use OpenStack, how they prioritize OpenStack related product. Um, the first one is Aptera. So Aptera actually just recently became a gold member, uh, uh, if I understand correctly. So congratulations. Um, Aptera is based in Australia. It's a managed services and hosting providers. And they have a product is uh, based on OpenStack. It's OpenStack-based private cloud. And in addition to the private cloud, they also provide bespoke deployment and consulting. So according to them, they actually took more than a year to productize the product. So obviously, it's not like you know, plug and pay you know, out of the box. You can just put it in your environment and it run. And it really takes a lot of time. And they believe it's a continual ongoing effort because of a long development cycle. In terms of the challenges they see, um, because um, the product is still immature, so they have to overcome the immaturity of the product and, and also identify currently lack of the real testing performed on the code base as one of the challenge. Uh, the other one is to make sure the patches run against production site and not that stack. Um, they consider that as very important. Um, for the key lesson learned, it's interesting because I, I, um, I talked to uh, um, Tristan. By the way, is Tristan here? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, and he, you know, just gave me this uh, answer. So I just give a direct call, you know, and I'm not going to interpret and, and, and rephrase it. So uh, uh, Tristan said, you know, you're insane to blindly follow release. I think it makes sense because you uh, basically you're insane to blindly follow anything, right? And with an open environment, um, that's a lot of changes, and that's the beauty of the open environment because you can get your hand dirty and try to make changes that really uh, adapt to your um, environment and, and best benefits your users. And for them, um, in terms of the customers, um, they have about 10 deployments. Uh, six of them are based on the existing offerings, so the existing standardized OpenStack-based private cloud. 
And then the other four, they deploy with other partners uh, because they do have a network of the uh, partners that support open stat based services. So uh, obviously, I think it's important for any service provider to build an ecosystem of partners that can complement your services and also help to bring a total solution to the customers. For the use cases, uh, they have you know um, uh, a variety of use cases. Some use it for DAP test, which is a very um, you know typical one, and then some use it for uh, proof of concept, for scalability and federation, and also um, others use it for collaboration research, as well as uh, data analytics uh, and analytics. So for Aptera, uh, I think the next step for them is to grow the company because the company is still relatively small and it's self-funded. So they want to raise additional funding that they can help them grow and you know, be become the sort of like the de facto open stat service providers in India and across Asia Pacific. The next one I want to show is uh, Huawei. And I think Huawei also recently became a gold member. <laughs> of, the of the OpenStat uh, Foundation. And they um, have a product is, uh, by the name Fusion Cloud. And the first release of Fusion Cloud actually is Fusion Sphere, um, R3C110, which is the, you know, the product that's based on the OpenStat component, which is a virtualization platform within with Fusion Cloud. And the next release, they will have Fusion Sphere R5, and that will base on the entire open stack, you know, stack and components, so including the compute, network, storage, and management services. Um, obviously, this company is a big company, so they can afford to uh, have a lot of commitment uh, in terms of the human resources. So they have over 1,000 engineers uh, involved in the Fusion Cloud project. Now, for them, because they use this product um, to go after the enterprise market, so they, the challenge for them is to um, when, when they work with the OpenStack, is they think it's lack of the enterprise-ready uh, uh, features. Um, so they have to do a lot of the um, uh, sort of like uh, in, uh, customized incorporation, incorporate some of the uh, existing enterprise-level features into OpenStack. And they also have to make sure the compatibility of the underneath uh, virtualization platform for the key lesson learned um, for Huawei, they think the really important lesson for them is being able to experience and, and to understand OpenStat and the strengths, the weaknesses, and, and that's just important, you know, learning from your mistake and you're able to, you know, make it better. And the other um, lesson learned they said is around uh, addressing issue related software upgrade and business migration. Uh, customers, uh, they do have customers now. Uh, the product has been, uh, um, have been out for, I believe, you know, about a year. And um, they see traction in the telco and the entertainment sectors. Obviously, the telco segment is the really strong segment for Huawei, and they continue to bring new solutions to this segment. And um, also working with the top three um, Chinese telco carriers, and obviously, you know who they are. Um, and they said they also have more than a dozen uh, POC around the group. So for Huawei, the next step is really to bring OpenStep to their service providers, customers, to their enterprise customers. And the ultimate goal is to become the OpenStack enterprise solution providers. So every you know, service provider have a very um, aggressive goal. Huh? The next one, uh, NTT Communication, this is a very interesting company. As an incumbent in Japan, right, telecom providers, but they uh, actually made a lot of acquisition and investment in the cloud space. If you recall, they acquired Dimension Data, they acquired OpSource, they acquired Blue Flyer, and that's how they, you know, kind of work on their cloud strategies. And right now, they're really you know, investing in um, open, open source based technologies and also big on SDN. Um, they have a product. At the beginning, it was just a, a validation or verification of that product. Uh, it's based on OpenStat. And they have about 80 engineers you know, uh, work on that project. And they said they contribute 450 patches. And for that project, they, the, the primary use case is really to, um, to create office migrations and to support flexible virtual office environments using OpenStack as the underlying you know, infrastructure. And this project actually uh, recently just 
become productized and they release the product targeting their art star universal one, which is their networking um, customers using this product. So they already release a, a new product just less than a week. For them, the challenges as a service provider, they consider error handling and transaction processing is the major challenge. Also, is um, they have to build the multi plugin in order to uh, address issues associated with the concurrent use of multiple modules. Um, another <laughs> challenge is the thing is they need to constant, you know, uh, deal, deal with the error. I mean, uh, fixing the bugs because you know always have have that problem when they do the uh, internal testing. Now that could be a problem because that really slow down the you know the development process. Uh, key lesson learned from NTT. Um, they believe the community-based OpenStack currently lack error processing function, which is very uh, crucial for service provider, indispensable. That's the way that they um, describe. Um, so, but they also think the community itself can be valuable because with the community, they can bring you know expertise. They can bring. Uh, uh, contributions, and they can use this community effort to, you know, to uh, develop the function, as opposed to do it themselves, because that will tremendously reduce the development cost. In terms of customers, because the product is still relatively new, and so um, we probably have to wait and see, you know, before we can make any comment. For the next step, NTT will be focusing on enhancing the service, service functions to support the uh, internet users uh, between and across their business, uh, across their enterprise customers. The last one I want to show you as an example is uh, Innovance. So Innovance is a European-based company, it's an IT service provider, and uh, they um, you know, have multiple products, and one of the products is called Yino Cloud, which is their IaaS infrastructure as a service platform. It's a host platform, and so they use that platform um, to support their customers, but they also provide consulting and managed services. Um, they said they took about three months to actually get the platform up and running, but that's not the end of the story. Actually, that's just the beginning of the story. They said um, they actually have to take one year to reorganize engineering around the notion of continuous delivery. So in order to make it work to support their customer base, they need to you know, make changes to get improvement. Um, for this product, they have about the whole team, basically, the entire development team, about 25 employees involved in um, different various uh, OpenStack projects. And also you know, being considered as one of the top 10 contributors to OpenStack for the past three releases. For them, the implementation challenge, obviously, as we you know, highlight and many you know, uh, presenters also you know, talk about, is the gap, the features gap OpenStack currently have. Uh, another challenge they think is more not related to technology, it's more about business uh, operation, is you know, how to manage the growth while maintaining their core value and be able to evolve at their own, at their own pace. For the key lesson learned, they say, you know, the most important, thing, most important thing is to stay agile, and you need to be flexible. Now, it, I think it's easy for a small company to do it, to stay agile, to stay nimble, to adapt to the changes, because this ecosystem is going quickly, technology is going quickly, so you have to be really flexible in that sense. And the other lesson learned, they think, is to think out of the box. I think that's important for any innovator, because, um, you know, you just, want, you just don't want to be another service company. You want to be able to distinguish yourself using your technologies and your, um, your um, a skill that match with the customer requirement. The custom, in terms of customers, they have about 200 customers. Now, not all the 200 customers are on this Eno Cloud. Actually, the Eno Cloud itself is not a revenue generator. So I think the 200 customers is, is a mix of the consulting business, the managed services business, and the hosting business. And some of the reference customers here, uh, including the public cloud um, for CloudWatt and the private cloud based on OpenStack for uh, uh, Sovereign uh, Morpho. Um, again, they consider Eno Cloud as a demonstrator. Um, so, 
to demonstrate the technology know-how to their customers, as well as a way to validate its development. And moving forward for uh, InnoVents is to continue to expand the operation. Uh, right now, they're still pretty much European-based, so they want to um, to grow beyond Europe, and they want to replicate the business process as much as possible and in many different geographical locations. And the primary focus for them in 2014 is to grow their existing customer base outside of Europe. So we talk about different example. We talk about uh, the perspective from enterprise, and we talk about you know, service providers. Uh, it seems like you know, there's lots of excitement around OpenStack, but not without challenges, as, all, as we all know. And here we just highlight a couple we think is important, need to resolve, and it might not be resolved overnight. Uh, the first one is OpenStack talent. Um, obviously, we still need talent to really uh, contribute to the community. And this is one thing um, a lot of us, especially service providers, uh, you know, are kind of hesitant to move forward because they don't have that kind of skill and expertise. Uh, limited functionality, we talk about that many times. Uh, you know, still some of the features they think it's not enterprise ready. Some of the features they think, you know, they're lacking because, you know, it's not uh, tailored to service providers. So it's continue to have to add, you know, service features and functionality. Uh, fragmentation within the OpenStack community. Um, this one actually is quite interesting because the this community is quite big and everyone has many different ideas. And you know you contribute the code, you change the code, and you know, and there's no validation in terms of the you know the hardware. So with all these you know different opinions and contribution, I mean, what's the best way to um, sort of sort of like to consolidate um, all these uh, um, uh, comments? And I think right now. Um, the foundation try to do you know uh, a better job in terms of doc documentation, but I think there's still more room uh, for improvement. And then the last one we think you know obviously the um, we ne we need more production type um, you know um, uh, example because that's is a proven example to demonstrate you know the strength and the uh, feasibility of OpenStack. Um, we do believe that you know uh, these you know uh, challenges will continue to evolve, and some of them may not be o may overcome um, you know overnight, obviously. But you know it will it will get resolved with the community effort, and you know who is going to be take taking the need? I think you know there's no such thing as only one group of the you know um, users that are going to take the need. I mean because it's a community effort, so we believe that everyone will play a role. So with that, that's my you know, key takeaway. And um, the number one is we talk about enterprise. And obviously, enterprise have you know, high interest. They're very interested in the open stack model because of the open environment, because being able to, you know, to be in control. So we believe that will be a continued driver for the new project. And uh, we also think the convergence and the crossover of enterprise and service providers uh, will present opportunity to vendors to serve you know, um, both parties. Um, we look at the example, there are a number of a uh, handful of the commercial deployments in Asia Pacific, but the market we believe for OpenStack is still defining itself right now. Um, for the market sizing, we look at earlier, uh, global revenue for OpenStack is still relatively small today, but we expect them to grow rapidly. And if you remember, the CAGR is 43%, so it's a very solid, healthy growth over the time. And um, last but not least, the demand for OpenStack expertise and experience um, continue to um, present a challenge. So it really needs um, the old contribution to, you know, obviously, contribute contribute your expertise and your experience around OpenStack to the bigger community, and that's the key. Now, for those who are very interested in, you know, continue to learn about OpenStack, I recommend two reports, which um, one is uh, our long-form report called the OpenStack Tipping Point. Um, we have a couple analysts focus on, you know, talking to OpenStack uh, 
vendors and ecosystem, so they have a very deep uh, insight in terms of the, the, the current market status and you know, the trends, the drivers, and, and the, uh, the, trend, uh, I mean the, the challenges. And if you want to understand more about the market sizing, I would recommend the, the second report, the market insights report called OpenStack Related Business Revenue. Uh, don't, I'm not going to read the whole title, but that basically is a report to detail the methodologies of the market sizing that I just highlighted earlier. So with that, um, I'm going to conclude my uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Okay. <laughs> All right. If if you have no questions, then uh, I think we can end it earlier. Uh, we still have nine seconds here. <laughs> Thank you very much.